boo, 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 boo. Happy Bowtie Friday here with the Build Guild. Another another Build Guild BTF. Uh, chill, chill and chill. Uh, we should let's see who should we get started with. I think uh, we have a couple people that have a few things to show off. Raz, you want to kick us off? You have like depends on who has their stuff ready to share or not. Yeah, if, if Viraz, you're ready. Cool, cool. I, I'm particularly inter interested in this because it's like integrating with V3, which is kind of like complicated how, yeah. how liquidity positions are working. But the, the goal here is to create kind of this retroactive public goods funding toolkit. And this was the kind of the ERC 20 arm of that. And the goal is, can we have a token? You deploy, you deploy a, an ERC 20 token, you distribute it, to your folks, your, your team basically. And then later on, if that team builds a public good, we need a, a mechanism for whales and, and funders to be able to retroactively fund your project. And, and this is a way where I think what you've built is they basically add the ETH side of the liquidity to your token. So you would deploy a token, you would give it out to your founders. And then later on, if you guys have built something that becomes a public good, uh, whales would basically add the ETH side of the liquidity and give your token value, and then you could trade your token out. Did I did I cover that close yep. to, to correct? Yep. Cool. Yep. But but yep. like the 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 technical stuff underneath the sheets with how this interfaces with Uniswap and how you create something without liquidity and then have whales be able to add liquidity. I think there was one piece of insight that you came up with here that like when the whale adds the liquidity, you split it. And you buy half tokens with it, and then you you use that as the liquidity yeah. or something like that. I'll I'll let you get into it. Why don't Why don't you get into it, and we'll see how it goes. Also, also, yeah. Bliss Bliss is not allowed to share today. He shared last time, and he, he his screen was so wide. <laughs> his screen was so wide that like the video the video is like this thin layer. <laughs> so if you have if you have like a four monitor wide uh, thing, maybe when you share like share just like a square. <laughs> All right, okay, Viraz, you're here. up, man. You're yeah. good, Bliss. I'm just sharing awesome. my screen. Uh, cool, screen. perfect. Oh, oh, I may not have said it. Okay, now, yeah, it's, yeah, now yeah. you're set. Yeah. You're ready. You're ready. <laughs> yeah. There uh, we go. Are you guys able to got view? It. Uh, yep, we've got code. Retroactive funding. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm just opening my code, I think. Cool. Yeah, just opening the code as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, as you said, uh, right. The aim we did a NFT build similar. Like we did an M NFT build uh, before this. So now when we jumped onto the ERC twenty build, the probably the sort of you know popular option was to have you know Uniswap V three integrated. So we don't have to you know care about how we manage the pricing and all that stuff. So uh, basically, it's uh, just you know two parties uh, which are involved. One is ob obviously the project. Uh, you know the project founders or the project owner whatever right uh, related to the project and then we have the whales uh, which come in if you have of course if you have built a public if your project is a public good so what i'll just walk in through the contract first if that's okay you know just to give it some context right uh, yeah so basically what we do is we uh, we deploy uh, every project will have to deploy it, their own contract because again the uni pool on uniswap will be different for each project, obviously, and the pool that we are right now using it uh, is with uh, wrap teeth because Uniswap P3 does not have uh, uh, like it uses wrap teeth. So yeah, uh, we have the pool with wrap teeth and the project token, of course. So basically, you just you know uh, you uh, when you deploy the token, uh, we uh, you know mint the project uh, founder who basically who deploys the contract gets some uh, tokens, some project tokens, which are minted from, uh, because this is an ERC-20 contract, essentially, right? And then what we do is we uh, start creating the Uniswap V3 pool, where people can then, where uh, we can provide liquidity and mint new position and, you know, just keep increasing liquidity as whales come in. So basically what we do is we have first create the pool with a fee, uh, with a 1% uh, fee. So this is 1% right now, right? And because Uniswap V3 has three different options. So for now we, uh, you know, take in 1%, uh, I think it's 0.3%, in fact, uh, it's not 1%. This is 0.3%. So uh, I'll have to confirm once, but yeah, I think it's around that. But yeah, anyways, uh, we create the pool and then what happens is uh, with Uniswap V3, because it works with tick math, uh, where uh, be, uh, the thing is, uh, to you know, have more precise uh, uh, 
uh, you, you know, prices the, to have more, use more precise values of prices, we basically have to, you know, uh, initialize the pool with a square root price, initial square root price. And for simplicity right now, the build, we just, you know, take it as one to start off and then we initialize the pool. Because if your pool isn't initialized, you cannot really provide liquidity to it, right? So that is the essential step which happens in the constructor, right? After that, what we do is uh, uh, then basically the whales uh, whales come in, and uh, you know they'll just provide an ETH liquidity, whatever amount they choose, and the amount that they choose, we mint the same uh, you know same project tokens again, but this time we mint it to the contract. And then both amounts in equal proportions get added to the, you know, Uniswap pool position. That's the so key. They, yeah, that's yeah. The, the little trick there is when the whale comes in to provide, basically we want the user experience for the whale to be that project did well, YOLO some ETH and it's just done, right? And they don't have to think about like anything. They just like yeah. YOLO some ETH in and that project gets value because of that. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So basically, uh, we just only, you know, uh, the only uh, important bit here is that uh, we check that if you are minting a new position or because Uniswap V3 uses concentrated liquidity. So every person has, you know, their own position. It's not a common pool or like, you know, you don't provide liquidity to the overall pool. You just provide, you mint a position and then you provide liquidity to it. So we just check if the, the contract, the current, the, this contract has the NFT or not, because V3 mints an NFT when you mint a new position, right? It sends you an NFT. So we just check the NFT balance here. And then based on the balance, we check if we want to mint a new position or we want to just increase liquidity, you know, in that position, right? Based on that, we, uh, you know, just provide liquidity in equal proportions. And uh, uh, because it uses tick math again, so we, for simplicity right now, we just, you know, take the full range. But of course, this can be, you know, changed by you, whatever you feel is the right, uh, I mean, yeah, based on whatever, uh, uh, you know, you uh, it can be manipulated, right? So is there yeah. is there a good TLDR for the tick math? Like my, my assumption is because the concentrated liquidity, there's going to be these ticks or these like discrete buckets of where you can yeah. provide the liquidity. And if you concentrate your liquidity, you earn a lot more fees if things are traded back and forth there, yeah. but you end yeah. up on either sides of the ticks or uh, on either sides of your liquidity, you end up swapping all the way from one to the other. Is there is there any TLDR on the tick math or is it kind of just like, think of it like buckets and you're filling them with liquidity? Yeah, I mean, uh, to, because this is a fresh pool, right? So we, uh, that's why I basically choose, uh, you know, You want to, to, yeah, you want to do full liquidity yeah, in this case, range, but yeah, then you want to allow more yeah. people to concentrate yeah, it. Yeah, and then people can, of course, you know, concentrate the liquidity, right? If, when the pool has some li uh, initial liquidity, right? So then you can start in and you can start adding concentrated liquidity there. But yeah, for now, we just, you know, take the full range and yeah, more info on the Uniswap pipe paper. <laughs> that is the problem <laughs> exactly Best and, and i mean like this is really powerful like be, being able to build a contract that can interface with that concentrated liquidity and even automate some of that for you where you you could have your liquidity kind of automatically being concentrated and shifting around that's probably a very powerful tool yeah it took some time but yeah uh, got there uh, uh, and yeah, so uh, that is being uh, mainly uh, the process of you know providing liquidity. Uh, liquidity. Then basically, what we do is we uh, you know uh, then basically the project founders who have the tokens you know who got the tokens uh, when the contract was deployed. So they come into the picture where it they'll of course be monitoring the price and whenever they feel that it's you know sort of profitable or whatever you know just to if they want to swap out ETH, uh, swap out their project tokens for ETH. So basically they just do a simple swap and they get back in this case, because it's wrapped it. So right now it's, we get wrapped it back and yeah. So uh, from the pool and then, yeah. So basically you just, you know, swap out your tokens for uh, ETH and based on the current price of the pool and how the pool, uh, the pool configuration basically. So based on that, you get, you know, uh, yeah, you swap out. Yeah, so awesome. this is, yeah, so we just, you know, uh, spend very sort of less time on the UI, but we have sort of, you know, just, and again, uh, credit to Iron Soul, who's not here, uh, just to, you know, uh, get the UI, uh, in, you know, in, uh, done. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so basically what we, uh, this is our, uh, this is right now working on Rinkiby. 
so we have the pool parameters which is the uh, which include the pool liquidity the price your balances and all that the tokens which are in there you know uh, in the pool uh, uh, basically just uh, rendered on uh, rendered here and yeah so this is right now i am on the whale account so i can just provide some bit of liquidity right and i'll just uh, uh, yeah i'll just provide some liquidity and i'll have to uh, just you know uh, sign a transaction here and uh, and yeah, the liquidity, you will see the liquidity which will increase and then we can, you know, I will switch the accounts and uh, to the one of the project founders and then they can swap, uh, you know, their tokens. So, for. so at this point, you as a project founder, you've deployed your project token, you've distributed it. It's just a token. You know how to handle tokens. You're you're a token expert at this point. You've distributed your, your tokens at some ratio to all of the folks that helped you make that project happen. And then a whale is coming in and adding 0.2 ETH to that fund to basically give value to those tokens. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep. And 0.2, yep. I mean, not that's not a very whaley thing. Yeah, I didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So now, so this is the account of the project uh, uh, holder, the project token holder, right? And uh, so it will just uh, update. Yeah. So uh, right now I have 88 tokens. So I'll just swap some of them. Uh, maybe just swap 20 of them. Uh, right. And uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong uh, portal. Yeah. So I, I'll just, I can swap it on the, uh, by approving first, I'll swap, uh, you know, uh, so this is, I think I missed this. this. Oh, this is the project owner. Got it. Okay. So the whale has already distributed their funds at this point. It's like, I'm a project owner and I want to cash in a little bit of these tokens for some of that whale money. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just approving, which is, is in the, uh, which is probably the pain point of ERC twenties, but yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So now I'm, uh, I'm swapping, uh, swapping the token and uh, my, uh, wrap deep balance would increase uh, uh, based on the price. So yeah, it's just. If the, if the pool is coupled with the LC20, could it just be auto like approved for everyone? Sorry, uh, I didn't get that, sorry. So just like, like, like if the Uniswap pool is coupled with the ELC20, um, with ETH, yeah. like, like, could, could it just be auto approved? So folks don't have to approve to swap. Yeah, 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 obviously right now, I mean, uh, yeah, we can obviously, uh, you know, uh, do that. Uh, yeah, but right now just to show on the interface, we have the approval thing. In, in that case, would you have to deploy the token? Well, you would you would almost want to deploy the pool for, no, because you, you you have to have the token to deploy the pool. But then there's another fun, another transaction you would make on a custom ERC twenty that would approve that pool yeah. indefinitely for everyone. So you would deploy yeah. the token, you would deploy the pool, and then within the token you would have some little trick that allowed you to allow all kind of for for just your pool. So I guess you could say someone on that approved transaction. Yeah, right now because we just you know following the very uh, just following the basics. So yeah, that's why we have it on the UI. But yeah, of course. This can be, you can, yeah. But I think you could actually, because I think, isn't it create to like you could, you could know what the address yeah, is. Yeah, all right. Be. All right. All like right. So you, you calculate your token address with a create to. Is yeah, that yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. We can. And then that. you put that into the pool and you deploy the pool. And then you get the pools address and you deploy your ERC20 with the pools address as like an auto approved. So you could do it in those two. I like that. This is fun. Web three is great. Yeah, we yeah. can do all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So did the did the project owner get some get some e yeah, yeah. So there was point six five. Yeah. So he got point zero two right now. Uh, but yeah. So uh, that's uh, he got the balance. He got point zero two uh, wrapped it back uh, when he exchanged. But yeah. So uh, I think uh, we. Uh, I think this is a good head start. But uh, yeah, I think there can be of. You know, once it gets a bit, once this, you know, gets a bit mature, I think we can like, you know, uh, again, go down that rabbit of a hole of, you know, pro, uh, being more efficient in terms of, you know, providing liquidity and trying to rebalance the pool. But yeah, uh, uh, I think this is a good starting point, but yeah.
Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. we have this starting point in ERC twenty. We have an NFT starting point. We have you know Bliss and some Moonshot folks thinking about what a front end might look like to make this thing like super easy to just have like a nice little curve. I think we've got a lot of a lot of things moving. Uh, I think one of the most important parts is probably meeting meeting with the whales and figuring out what kind of UI they want and how we're going to do this. And one of those whales is Carl from Optimism, and Optimism is doing a ton of stuff for public goods and funding with their with their validator fees. So I think that's probably next step is like, I need to go hound those guys and see like, here's what we have so far. Are we on the right track? What what should we do next? So good good work for us. Great work on this. Uh, I, I yeah. am very excited to see the public goods space uh, warm up and and have, you know, other things other than the, the couple players we've had, like, go, go, go and go explore how we can make public goods funding a lot easier with this retroactive public goods funding token idea. But good job, Raz. Who just, who's next? Oh, I think yeah, I hear who's next? Screen, so. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Who is next? Carlos, you wanna you wanna show us some speed run Ethereum stuff? Sure. Uh, All right. Do you want to make like a an introduction of yeah, speed yeah, run yeah. Ethereum? I'm not sure if yep. everyone was like the last call. So and who knows who's who's randomly watching this on YouTube yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, could, yeah. Could be. For you, random, uh, speedrun Ethereum is like the, it's kind of the, the natural progression of, we, we started with Scaffold ETH, we started building all these little starter kits, we realized it was good for learning syntax, but then it kind of became bigger and it was able, you're, you're able to kind of like learn Ethereum and learn Web3, learn IPFS, learn how to build all these things. And we created a curriculum and those curriculum, that curriculum lived in GitHub and it was in a speed run medium article and a couple other things, but we've kind of formalized it now into a full on like service and anyone can land at speed run Ethereum. They can go through the challenges and they can build up their web three portfolio. And I think this is the coolest, this is the coolest kind of like side effect of we'll teach you how to build in web three. We'll show you all these cool challenges. But at the same time, like we'll help you build up your Web3 portfolio and we'll help you get exposure and, and kind of show off that you, like you have the knowledge to build these things. Here's here's one of the challenges here. Yeah, go, go ahead. You take over, Carlos. You know more than I do at this point. This OK, so I just wanted to share like some of the feature updates that we made like the, this last uh, month since the last uh, call. And um, one of those is like the activity fifth that, well, uh, this is like the last Few things that happened on on Speed and Ethereum, like you know, like builders creating accounts or people submitting challenges or or you know more, more stuff here. Um, another thing that we made is um, supporting like having like socials on the profile. So now you can assign, for example, you know, I can put like my Telegram here. Uh, you can sign this and update your socials here and. The most important stuff that we have been, like we are working on it, is the auto grading stuff. Like right now, um, let's go with uh, an example. Right now, um, if I go to a challenge and I submit the challenge, like Jason and, and Zach and some other people are like manually like, you know, reviewing all of the, all the submissions. And if you are an admin, you can go to review submissions and you know you see here the challenge and you can you know. If I review, like, sorry, and reject. So uh, we were thinking that if we want to uh, scale this, um, a lot of people are going to come and start submitting at least the first few challenges, right? So um, we need uh, we needed a, a way to automate that grading at least for the first few challenges, right? Because I think this is going to look like a funnel. Right, so a lot of people are going to come in and then complete like, the first few challenges, but less people are going to, you know, arrive to the third or, or fourth challenge. Right, so what we did is um, first creating like um, like Austin created like a test, like hard hat test for for each of the challenges. I'm not sure if you are Austin like in challenge two or three right now, right? Or yeah, two. I'm on two. It's kind of funny. Adam and I were joking about this. We're finally building tests. Like, <laughs> like well, we've prototyped so many ever, right? things yeah. and like yeah. kind of left tests is like obviously if you're a solidity developer you should be building tests along with your solidity as you go but a lot of what scaffold ETH does is it lets you kind of 
have a front end for your contract as you're building it. So you're kind of testing it as you go. So tests have not been like a formal piece of scaffold ETH, but now that we like need this auto grading and we need to be able to have each challenge have like a very like automated system of grading, we're finally writing tests. What's yes. up, Adam? I see you came off a uh, uh, video too. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I mean, okay. So tests. we're doing them now. Fair enough. Uh, we're doing tests. Keep going, Carlos. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. So, so yeah, uh, like Austin created like a test for each of the challenges, right? And we put this test uh, behind like an Express server, right? And we created like an like a basic API. So you can just like send, you know, the the challenge, uh, the challenge ID, the network you are in, and the uh, the contract address, right? And we will run those tests on our server, and and you know we will validate. I mean, we will give you like a JSON response with success, uh, true or false, and then the feedback is going to be like right now is the output of the console. So let, let's, uh, as you saw before, if I submitted. Um, a challenge, I have to manually review it, right? And this is the one that I just made. But uh, right now for challenge zero, we have the auto grading enabled. So if I submit a challenge right now, let's take this one, which is a valid contract. All right, live demo. I like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure this is going to break, but <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't care about the deployed URL. I mean, this is something that we should work also, like uh, having like some front end tests, right? Like maybe some Cypress or whatever to al also check like the front end, you know, like you can actually go to the front end and click in the, into the mint button and then, you know, have, uh, give them, get in the NFT or, or whatever. Okay. So right now, uh, when you submit the challenge, um, I'm, I'm getting like the, you know, the challenge submitted, but actually like the, the, our backend is waiting for the auto grading response. So the user got like the instant response, but the, the backend of the speedrun Ethereum is waiting for the auto grader. So this would take like a few seconds, I think, uh, or maybe it's going to break. I don't know. Come on, come on, come on. Please work <laughs> first try. Uh, let's see, let's see. So this is, we're watching the logs of your backend builder and it's currently basically making, it's probably making a transaction on Rinkeby or something yes, yeah. right I mean, now. This is calling like your, you know, your server, yep. your auto grading server. So that's okay. like- oh, So maybe like, it's oh, my server that's down. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it has to go do this stuff synchronously, right? It's got to go out to your contract. It's oh. got to try to mint something and make sure that works. Yeah, it looks like it did. So you. Yeah, so it basically my server just went and minted an NFT on that contract on Rinkaby live to make sure yeah. that the NFT worked. And it failed for some reason. Oh so no, we... it timed out. <laughs> oh, because oh, yeah? is that not deployed or is that contract there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I tried it before and this contract is oh, working. No. So, so, okay. so maybe so we timed yeah, out. a timeout. Could be Rinkaby. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take okay, we'll have to figure that out. And that yeah, kind of yeah. opens up this question of like how are grading and right now we're thinking let's just get like the the lowest hanging fruit let's add a little bit of automation to this like you said it's a funnel let's get the things at the top of the funnel to be as automated as possible and then kind of like you know challenge three four and five will probably be like go build a multi-sig and at that point you know we as human graders could get in and make sure their multi-sig works a little bit but yeah, it would be good to automate some of this stuff, but also maybe we should be downloading their contract and just running it locally, like in some kind of contained environment. We're, we're still very open to how we end up doing all this auto grading, but the goal here would be, let's have thousands of folks flowing through speedrun Ethereum and getting some of these first challenges out of the way and getting the mental model without being blocked on us. And then when they get to some of those more, you know, complicated challenges where we have to explain, you know, you, you, you allowed re-entrancy here, or you use the wrong kind of way to send ETH, like some of those first things that we start coaching people on, we can kind of have that human interface, but this system is going to allow us to scale a lot better. So awesome, awesome work, uh, Carlos. Sorry, my back end failed you there. <laughs> it timed out 45 second time. So it was 
it timed out trying to mint an NFT on that contract on Rinkaby, which or could Rinkaby. be a handful of things. Yeah. 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 I mean, I tested like this just right before the call and it works, but I okay. Know. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> we could make the timeout longer. We, we probably just need to figure out where it's crashing here and there and kind of tinker with it. But good work. We need to keep working on this and, and sharpening up these these tests and getting them going. Add more challenges. If you're a builder, please help us make more challenges. It kind of takes kind of a, a special kind of uh, uh, empathetic person to build these challenges, I think. So we're looking for that. We're looking for more challenges to get created. If you're not that person, but you are a good builder, build something cool, make make a make a junkie read me and then send it to me and then I'll clean up the read, read me or something like that. So even if you're not a, a super challenge builder, help us make these challenges and get them better and get them going. But speedrun Ethereum, good work, Carlos. Awesome stuff. He, he he has some other projects he's too shy to show off, but maybe next maybe next time. Next time, next time. Uh, Calvin, Calvin, are you uh, are you around? I think maybe if we could have Calvin talk to us about the zk toolkit that he made, and then we'll finish out with some optimistic fancy loogies. Are you out there, Calvin? Uh, can everybody hear me? We got you. Sweet. Okay, uh, let me just try to share my screen here. Oh. All right, can everybody see? Got it. Yep, we've got it. Cool. So uh, this branch is uh, what I call the ZK approved membership. Um, it's just, <laughs> I guess, a really simple. I'm doing air quotes right now, but you can't see <laughs> uh, branch that. Uh, will let you anonymously prove that you're a set within a Merkle tree. So uh, let's pull up the site here. Um, so this is my really bad UI for it. <laughs> uh, just hit here, generate secrets. It um, will generate a bunch of random numbers. This top one is uh, what I've labeled a secret within the app. Uh, the second one is a nullifier. Basically, you need to to be able to record that you've actually like submitted a proof. So if you only want somebody to prove one time, you send out this nullifier so that the secret isn't revealed, uh, but you can actually like record stuff about it. Then we hit uh, generate join call data in the back end. That's just uh, adding you to the Merkle tree. And then you hit join, and that will actually send the transaction to the blockchain. And does that set the Merkle root in the contract? What's happening there? Yeah, so when you hit join, it actually like sends it to the contract. It, it generates a proof that you've added it to a Merkle tree and then it'll set that to the contract. Let me pull up the contract here. So that is calling this uh, add leaf function here. Um, so this is all your proof data. Um, it'll, this, the, always the, um, the first one is, sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> uh, like the, the root that's generated, here's the circuit. So you can see there's a bunch of input values here. Um, so there's the old root, which is the root that's stored on the contract. And then in the function, it has a require statement to make sure that you're using the root that's stored in the contract. And then out here is the output root, which is what the circuit generates. And then that's what's updating in the contract function. You're doing great for just waking up. This is awesome stuff. <laughs> this is like, uh, this is really empowering. Like when you said simple, it's it's really important to have it be simple because all of this stuff is super complex. And if you wanted to build a membership system where members can't see each other, it's like, what? maybe we should dive into that. What, what is actually hidden and what is visible here? What what are we hiding with, with the ZK tech here in terms of basically we're saying a bunch of people are, are in this, that they can prove their membership but you can't see the list of members. Is that right? Okay, so because of the way smart contracts work and everything, like you could see who submitted the transaction to enter the organization. 
So unless that address is already anonymized, like you'll know who's in there. But when you actually do the proving of the membership, you can't tell who did that proving. So that's a good way to move on to this part. So right now we just have a, a tree that has one member in it, so it's not that useful. But we'll take this secret here at the top. Just copy paste that because my UI is bad. <laughs> and then uh, because the it's not like a regular Merkle tree because circuits are hard. <laughs> it's a variant called a sparse Merkle tree. And the main difference is that a sparse Merkle tree, every input is like indexed. So when you like add it to the sparse Merkle tree, um, it's added with basically the index, like the key number. It's kind of like a mapping or a, an array. So we have to put what location our secret is at in the tree. Then we do uh, generate member call data. Again, that's abstracted away. And then we hit prove. And that'll send transaction blockchain. And I just made it in this contract. So it's a bool <laughs> that this address is like proved that it's uh, in this Merkle tree. Just could right here. could some could some administrator somehow add people like the the one I the one thing is that like you can see all the transactions going in so you could see yep. the members getting added, no matter what that address going in there is going to be somehow visible is that true or could there be a third party that adds all these folks without their addresses getting leaked. Okay, so what's getting added isn't really the address it's this. This hash right here, which is a hash. It's the new the, root or whatever, right? Yeah. So the hash is like, this is what's going to be stored on the Merkle tree that is like the root stored on the contract. So you can see the address of who sent it. But um, so yeah, I guess you could have a third party that you just like relay the hash to. And then they add it to, I think that's pretty much what Tornado Cache does actually. So we could, we could, if you, if we wanted to, if we wanted to have a hidden membership, we could have a third party collect all of the members' addresses and and craft this thing and send the transaction without their addresses getting leaked, and then later on, all any of those members could come to this website and and generate a proof that proves that they're in that list without those addresses ever. Interesting, but yeah, still, like totally even when you, possible. yeah, even when you make the transaction you're making it from an address the the goal with a lot of this stuff is like uh and and you have another branch for this like voting and it, it's it's to it's to hide as much information as you can but still be yep. able to prove certain things like your membership or like what you're voting on because if we think about blockchain for voting for the president or whatever like you're going to see everyone's votes there's so much like problem where people can there's so much collusion and so much like uh, uh intimidation too you can see if you voted for someone like if if you can't prove that you voted for someone but you can still vote and and someone can prove that the votes are there but it's not actually you that voted there then that's a really powerful system and well, that's kind of like one of the things that's blocking blockchain right now is because it's so public and uh, uh you know obvious and auditable yeah um and i was also playing around with an idea like if you could like because you want to prevent vote selling and whatnot. So right, exactly. if you could like somehow, this is a challenge to everybody out there watching this. Um, if you could prove uh, the way somebody else has voted, you could like nullify their vote so that if you if they like sell their vote, they're like basically just like nullifying it immediately. Inter interesting. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to show off one more thing with this, which is, if I open it up here in a another like as another address, grab some ETH. So if I go back here and grab the secret and the nullifier, and you can see here it's a completely different address. Prove. And then, yeah, so 
And you basically, the way zero knowledge proofs work, you just, you can't tell the difference between these two addresses. Obviously you can see that this one is the one that submitted the uh, join transaction, but because I didn't put anything in the contract that prevents um, spending two secrets to, or the same secret more than once to prove membership, um, you could have like as many addresses as you want, use all this data to prove its membership in this. And it's it's really up to the Solidity engineer at that point. Like it's up to you as the contract builder to figure out how you want that logic to work and how you want how you want that mechanic to work. That's cool, exactly. man. Exactly. Yeah. And then in the voting app, I I did put something in there that only lets you vote once with your secret data. Awesome, awesome work. And I have a tweet out there for both of your branches, but uh, I'll try to remember to add the branches to the notes of the video. So if any folks are watching and they want to like go fork this, Calvin has created a very forkable simple uh, ZK <laughs> starter kit where you can do member, you can do membership proofs and you can do voting. And I remember like, so this stuff is, is, is over. I, I kind of understand a Merkle tree. I kind of understand some of this stuff. I kind of, but like ZK overall is like kind of over my head. So when Calvin reached out and said, I want to do something with ZK, I was like, go do voting, go do, go do memberships. And I kind of like, that's just me YOLOing a good idea maybe, but I have no idea. And it's so good. So props to Calvin for like, figuring it out and getting it done and getting this starter kit out there. So guys like me can fork it without having to be a giga brain and figure out how to build on top of ZK tech in a simple way. So good <laughs> job, Calvin. Great, great yeah. work. Great starter kits. We'll get those out. Go ahead. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so if anybody watching this wants like something that's not like already built a bit, um, I have the Circom starter kit, which uh, Circom is the language that we're using to write circuits here. Um, and that's just like a really bare bones, um, getting you started with Circom. You don't have to like use this proof membership stuff. Uh, sneak peek for my next build, I'm doing a, a kind of board game kind of thing that you can have hidden moves in. And I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Yes, awesome. Yes, that's why like, like we, we make these primitives, we make these smaller starter kits, but then we build something really cool with the starter kits to kind of show off like actually what we have here is like, you can make a product out of this very easily. So I really look forward to like an, a fully applied like game that people can play. Cause that's gonna, and that's really where we see most of the product market fit right now for ZK tech is in games with dark forest, right? So it's cool to see maybe a small, maybe it's a, a ZK game starter kit coming out next or something too. So great, yeah, great really work, Calvin. That. Awesome. Thank you Thank for you. building this stuff way over my head. It's good to have some some giga brains in the build guild along along with us <laughs> cavemen building along. So good good work, Calvin. Damu Damu's got the he's got the shirt he's got the smile he's got optimistic <laughs> loogies and they're about to get fancy. So I'll I'll hand it off to Damu for our last presentation today. Good 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 work. I'm excited for this one. Hi guys, I am sharing my cream. So there were loogies. And then there were optimistic loogies. loogies, and now we have fancy optimistic loogies. Yeah, the, the fancy loogies are uh, loogies even more cute. <laughs> yeah, you, you can add uh, NFT accessories to your loogie, like uh, a bow, or a mustache, or contact lens, or some ace lashes. Um, you you have to you, you have your your loogie your optimistic loogie and and then you have to upgrade uh, your loogie to a fancy loogie. Uh, you first approve the the upgrade. Here you can see the the layer two got fee and the layer one fee. Uh, is, is use uh, just a small of gas on layer one, but it's got a lot of more than the gas uh, on layer two. And then you can uh, upgrade to a fancy loogie. When, when you mean a, a new fancy loogie, uh, uh, using uh, your optimistic loogie as the source, uh, the, the, the optimistic loogie will be owner by the fancy loogie. Uh, and, and you can then downgrade the fancy loogie 
back to a to a, a optimistic lugi and you and you will get the original uh, lugi and the fancy lugi will be burned uh, so all the fancy things you add will get destroyed but okay so let, let me let no, me go through it so you can yeah you can uh, downgrade a, a, a fancy lugi that have uh, another nft inside you have uh, first remove the nft and then ah. uh, destroy the the fancy loot to avoid losing some nft in the middle so we've got we've got loogies that happened on mainnet and then we brought in optimistic loogies which we put a smile on them there's no real connection between the mainnet loogies and the optimistic loogies other than hopefully over in optimism it gives us a sandbox to try a bunch of things we find something that works really well and then we put it you know, on mainnet with the mainnet loogies. But we have mainnet loogies, then we have optimistic loogies. Then we have uh, the fancy loogie contract, which wraps the optimistic loogies, but also there's an accessories contract, right? Are the accessories like the yeah. eyes and the bow tie, those are their own NFTs also, is that right? Like you need yeah. to go it, buy an NFT, a, you need to go buy a bow tie or whatever? Yeah, each uh, NFT accessory is, each accessory is another NFT. Uh, go to the accessories sell... tab oh no you got it yeah. you got it go ahead go ahead you, yeah. you got the now demo you, yeah you you now can select a, a fancy dude to to wear when you select you get a, a preview for the fancy loogie and you can uh, here you have the nft for the bow the bow is a uh, each bow has a random color and if you are lucky the bow will rotate Ooh. Uh, I I meet some bow, but I don't uh, no rotating and no rotating and and clicking in preview. You can preview how the bow looks like in your loogie, and then decide if you want to transfer this bow to this uh, loogie. So here I can transfer this bow to the loogie. so cool and this is like <laughs> this and, is and the, now the, the ui, it, the yeah. UI no, sorry, sorry. is kind of messy here but it reminds me of like some of these big things that are taking off these big games like we have nft crafting here in this in this like you're minting loogies you're putting the the you're minting bow ties you're putting the bow tie on the loogie it's all rendered in a smart contract it's so cool mm -hmm. and, and then you have the slashes the slashes have a random color a uh, random length, and if you are lucky enough, the middle slasher will get another random color. And here, here we have a, a Ooh, slasher number three, eyelashes. yeah, with uh, <laughs> almost white middle slashes. <laughs> we can preview this on our Louis and transfer this. I'm trying to oh, get a bow tie that'll spin. I'm minting okay. a bunch of these. <laughs> it disappeared here, but I have some, I seen a pro in the update, but. So this is, this is like a very forkable kind of NFT yeah. crafting starter kit. If you're, if you're, if you're uh, hip to L2s and you understand that like this, 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 this 2022, this L2 2022, we're going to have a big year for L2s because they're, they're all online and they're kind of like opening up now the white list on optimism just got dropped so basically anybody can get in here with our evm compatible tools and and deploy all sorts of weird stuff so if you wanted to make something completely different that has to do with nft crafting maybe you're making a, a spaceship you could have all your parts be here just just like the bow and the eyelash could be fins and different modules for a spaceship. And then you could have a spaceship NFT and you could craft it together and you could make a whole game out of this. What, what Damu has built here, other people are deploying similar things and making millions of dollars by doing it anonymously and doing and, and like doing these weird like Ponzi scheme things, which I don't want you to do, but keep <laughs> building and, and fork this and you can create all sorts of cool NFT crafting stuff now on these L2s where it's a little cheaper. Now it is it is a couple bucks though. How much are we talking for transactions here? Like what what what's this costing us to mint one to put a put a, a mustache on one? Is it a couple um, bucks? 
Uh, yeah, uh, pag, uh, 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 maybe four or five uh, dollars. Okay. So it's still not and cheap. They, it's not it's not pennies. No, like no, you, no, you no, have to understand no, that no. if you're going to build a game around this, there has to be a lot of other like mechanics to make it worth five dollars to put together your spaceship, right? Or make it worth thirty dollars to be able to craft the whole thing. But finally, it's worth it, and it's not three thousand dollars to craft an NFT, right? When we were looking at Lugies and the Lugie tank and putting that on mainnet, it was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be. Oh, I get that crazy content lens. Yeah, <laughs> super rare. Awesome. What are they like pulsating? Kind of like, yeah, like the yeah. Lugies like tripping out big time. Cool. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I need a. Uh, oh, yeah, look at those eyes. <laughs> so it's animation in the SVG, right? The smart contract yeah. basically says this is an ellipse and it's going to kind of pulsate a little bit and you and you, that's written in the solidity and people query the smart contract to see those animations. Do, are his eyes pulsing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want what he has. <laughs> <I want what. laughs> <laughs> we need a, a retentive bow. <laughs> yeah, we got to get, yeah. I, I mentioned and, some, but I didn't get one. <laughs> And, and the fancy Lugi counter is ready to add new NFT for more, more accessory. Uh, maybe you can add a hat or some hair or a pair of glasses or, or maybe ever a, a body. Awesome. That's awesome. Great work, Damu. I'm going to play around with Thank this you. some more. This is a lot of fun. I love the crafting page. It's so like complicated looking and it's like, so, so, uh, Calvin, I think was saying earlier, my shitty UI, but honestly, like yeah. when I see someone with a shitty UI, it usually tells me that like, they're a good builder that have, and they've created something, they've really crafted something here. And what they need is like, if we had a UI person that could like come in and yeah. clean it up, then it's Wait. like, it's, it's that, you know, it's almost a yeah. full product. We we have a, a UI uh, guy to make it look better. And it looks great. <laughs> it's awesome. Beautiful. It's perfect for what it needs to be. It's a perfectly, <laughs> it's a perfect forkable, craftable NFT example on Optimism live. It's open source. Hopefully you have a decent readme. We'll, we'll throw it in the uh, I, show notes. I have to update it. Yes. Okay. I yeah. Let, let me know. Let me know. Awesome. All right. Great work, Thank everybody. Great, great. Damu, are you coming to ETH Denver? You got to bring more of those shirts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Hearts, 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 guys. Happy Bowtie Friday. So many awesome things. Uh, let me see. Is there any like build guild? Uh, I don't think so. I think we'll just go async for anything else. So yeah, hearts, hearts, hearts. Thank you, guys. Thanks for everything. Happy Friday. See you guys in a Friday or two. Keep building. Check out Scaffold ETH. Check out the starter kits. Check out everything that everybody built today. See you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.